The first question, Muhammad Fazl from Bangalore. He says, I am a software engineer. Sir, we Muslims pray fast and try to do all the things that please Allah. Then why are people like Bill Gates, Jeff Begos, Mukesh Ambani, why are they rich? Why not Muslims? Also, why only a small section of Arab Muslims are rich? Abul Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, it is mentioned Sahih Bukhari, volume number 4, hadith number 3158, that by Allah, I do not fear poverty, but I fear the wealth of this world. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he feared that his ummah, they will have wealth, they will become rich and this money, this wealth will take them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So wealth, being rich, having money, it is not the criteria for success. Based on your question, it seems as if you are trying to say that success is based on how rich a person is, how wealthy a person is, how much money a person has. But true richness, it is a richness of Iman, it is a richness of Taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allah yatqakum inna Allah alimun khabir O mankind, we have created you from a single pair of a male and female and divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other not that you may despise each other and the most honored among you in the sight of Allah he is the most righteous of you the person who has taqwa the criterion for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is not caste it is not color it is not wealth it is not money but it is righteousness it is God consciousness it is taqwa it is piety and our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that it is more easy for a poor man to go into Jannah than a rich man. Because the rich person, he has to give accounts of all his spendings. He has to give accounts whether he has given zakah. He will be questioned about all these things. Whereas the poor person, he will get 100 out of 100 in zakah because he does not need to pay zakah. Similarly, the true richness, it is a richness of Iman, it is a richness of Taqwa. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what did he leave behind? Did he leave behind wealth? Did he leave behind money? He left behind Sahaba who were torchbearers of the world. And I disagree with you. Wherein you said that why not many Muslims, they are rich. In fact, if you analyze, among the top 100 richest people, majority of them, they are Arab Muslims. You have something known as the listed companies. You have the Forbes list, etc. These are the listed companies. So these businessmen like Bill Gates, Jeff Begos, etc. They are, according to the listed companies, they are the richest people in the world. Because they are public limited companies, they are registered. But if you analyze the Arab Muslims, many of their companies, they are not public limited companies. And as I said earlier, that among the top 100 richest people in the world, majority of them, they would be Arab Muslims. But what is the state of the Muslim Ummah? Today, the Muslims, they have wealth. But yet, Look at the state of the Muslim Ummah. We are divided. We are fighting over petty and small issues. So wealth is never the criteria for success. Even though we Muslims, we have wealth, we are rich, but yet the state of the Muslim Ummah, it is divided. And Umar radiallahu an, he asks the Sahabas, that what would you want this room to be filled with so that you can give it in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
So the Sahaba they say that we want this room to be filled with gold so that we can give it in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar radiallahu anhu asks, ask for something better. The Sahaba they say that we want this room to be filled with rubies, pearls, diamonds so that we can give it in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar radiallahu anhu asks, ask for something better. The Sahaba they say, O oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, you tell us what is better. So Umar radiallahu anhu. He says that I want this room to be filled with the likes of Abu Baidah bin al-Jarrah. May Allah be pleased with him. So that he can go and spread the message of Islam. I want this room to be filled with the likes of Mu'adh bin Jabal. May Allah be pleased with him. So that they can go and spread the message of Islam. Umar radiallahu an. He did not want the room to be filled with gold, gems, pearls, diamonds, but he wanted the room to be filled with du'at like Abu Baidah bin al-Jarrah, Mu'adh bin Jabal, may Allah be pleased with them, so that they can go out and spread the message of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Sahaba, they did not leave behind gold, they did not leave behind wealth, but they left behind the legacy, they left behind their character, they left behind their message so that people can follow their path and there is a list of the 10 richest people in the world at the third position is bill gates at the second position is jeff because do you know who is the richest person in the world who is on the number one position the richest person in the world is the one who offers two rakah of sunnah before the Fajr obligatory prayer. Because offering two rakah of sunnah before the Fajr obligatory prayer is better than the world and all that is in it. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he said that the one who offers two rakah of the sunnah before the Fajr obligatory prayer, it is better than the world and all that is in it. Imagine just offering two rakah of sunnah of the Fajr prayer. Imagine the reward, the greatness, the importance of offering the Faraid prayer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he just stated the importance of two rakah of sunnah of Fajr prayer. It is better than the world and all that is in it. So, we Muslims, we believers, we need to strive for the hereafter. And the only thing that will be acceptable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, it is not your money, it is not your wealth, but it is your good deeds. It is your righteous deeds. So, even if a person, he is rich in this world, but he may not be rich in the hereafter. If a person runs behind money and wealth in this world, in the hereafter, he will not get his share. Therefore, for us believers, the prime focus, the true richness is the richness of Iman. Success is based upon a person's good deeds, upon a person's righteous deeds. So we need to understand that even though some people, they may be rich, they may be wealthy, but that is never the criteria to judge the success of a human being.